Hello everyone, Namaskaram. Welcome to my channel, BPK Nutrition, Mind Body Healing with Pushpa. Uh, this is a third part of a three part series that I've been doing in the last couple of weeks. Um, this is uh, the third part for the holistic management of blood pressure. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about yoga and pranayama and how these are used as therapy in Ayurveda. So any, even the yoga asanas and pranayama should be geared towards your needs and your body type and all of that and not just do any kind of yoga for anybody. So this is the uniqueness of yoga as well as, prana, as Ayurveda and that's what I'm going to be sharing today. I will share also a sequence for you to practice on a daily basis. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. Uh, I've been doing the series on blood pressure control for the last couple of weeks and today concludes that series part three talking about yoga and pranayama. I've already talked about diet and lifestyle so if you haven't watched those please uh, go back and watch them to learn more. I will share the link in the description. So uh, if you've already subscribed to my channel thank you very much for that but if you haven't please do subscribe so you'll get some notification and also please share with some of your friends and family so they can also be benefited from the information that I share here. So let's get started. So yoga, again, yoga is very popular everywhere now. And again, most people think of yoga, they think of it as a physical exercise. And generally in the Western world, that is what it is. And it can be beneficial for your physical body. However, um, it is used as therapy in Ayurveda. Now, yoga asanas, when we talk about the postures, all postures are not suitable for everybody. So you really have to make sure that is something suitable for your body type and it will not create an imbalance in your body. And, and if you don't have Ayurvedic knowledge or a yoga teacher is teaching you this and doesn't have that kind of a knowledge, they may not be able to help you in that regard. So always make sure you find somebody who can teach you yoga with some Ayurvedic knowledge so that they know what is going to be useful for you. Now for blood pressure, as I mentioned before, it is more of a Pitta dominant, dominant um, uh, disease. So we're talking about Pitta dominance like the type A personality. So we talked about all of that before, if you please watch that. And of course, it, it also, there's a little bit of Vata involvement as well. So the asanas or the postures that you do in yoga should be geared towards uh, balancing the Pitta and Vata. So the Pitta balancing is usually more of the surrendering poses, like kind of forward bends like this and kind of surrender yourself to the floor, sort of physically and mentally. So kind of let that ego come down and then just kind of relax your mind and your body. The other thing is twisting poses. So you can kind of sit even on a chair like this and then extend your spine, inhale, and then exhale and twist to your left side and just kind of hold here and breathe for a few seconds and then you come back to center and then you can do that on the other side same thing inhale and stretch elongate your spine and then exhale and twist to the right so it's very important that you inhale and stretch first before you twist to either side and again you want to do both sides and then hold and breathe for a few seconds just kind of relax into that pose feel your body mind everything being together. Now this is how yoga should be done, very calm fashion. So find a place which is calm and soothing and quiet and then do it at that point. So again, I have shared a whole yoga sequence of these kinds of forward bends and twisting in a sequence about 25 minutes long, starting from a little bit of warm up to finishing with <clears throat> Shavasana or corpse pose, pose to get back to uh, balance. So whenever you have some time, you can go and check that out and I will share the link in the description and you can go and practice that on your own. Of course, uh, it's definitely beneficial to learn from a teacher if you can, but for, for the purpose of our video, I still shared something. So maybe you can try to do this again. Always remember to, to listen to your body and your mind and only push yourself to uh, comfort level. Do not uh, pu push yourself too much that you have pain. So that's very important to remember. Also check with your healthcare provider that you're okay to do it. So this is one thing. Now the second thing is the pranayama aspect. Now pranayama is controlled breathing. Now everything in our body, we are enlivened by prana or the life force. So it's not just breathing, it is prana. Prana is what sustains our body 
to be living. And when we even in India, in India, when somebody dies, a body leaves in Tamil, we say prana and the meaning the prana leaves your body. So the prana is what is sustaining us and keeping us healthy. So if there are blockages in the, in the pathway of the prana, then you're going to have disease. So a lot of the prana is, gets trapped or blocked usually in the joints. And this is why when you do the twisting and the warm ups and everything and you're active, all of this uh, blockages get removed and then you feel more refreshed. So, so there are a couple of pranayama or controlled breathing exercises that are very suitable for blood pressure. One of them is of course the Nadi Shodhana, which is alternate nostril breathing. A lot of people might have heard of this or Anulom Milom. This is suitable for all body types. Of course, it has to be done very slowly, gently and not to be pushed beyond capacity. Again, learn from a qualified teacher. The second thing is called Ujjayi breath or ocean breath. Now the ocean breath is you're kind of constricting your throat a little bit and then you're inhaling through the nose but then kind of taking in the uh, air slowly through the la through your throat into the chest filling up your all the way up to the diaphragm and your diaphragm ex uh, your belly expands to um, allow that breath to come in that is your, that is your inhalation and then you exhale the same way it goes out through the nose so i'm going to show you that demonstration quickly now um, so let's just watch. We're going to go inhaling through the nose. So So you can keep doing this, you can do this about 10 times in the morning, 10 times in the evening. If you need a count, you can go inhale at least 6 counts or 6 to 8 counts. Then pause for about 2 or 3 seconds, kind of keep that pot belly full and then slowly exhale through the um, abdomen, the chest and then the throat and through the nose. So this is a very good thing to do anytime just for relaxation. Even when you're really stressed, this is something you can do anywhere, even sitting on a chair. Just make sure your feet are grounded on the floor. The other two pranayamas which are very cooling in nature are called Sheetali and Shitkari. Now I'm going to demonstrate these two things. Now the Sheetali may or may not be easy for you because it, it uh, involves rolling the tongue. However, if Sheetali is not working or is hard, then Shitkari is an option. The first one is Sheetali. Where Sheetali, you're actually rolling your tongue and then inhaling through the tongue and you can feel that coolness of air going in. And then you're exhaling, close your mouth and exhaling through the nose. So let me show you that. So as you can see, if you try this on your own, you will find immediately your whole body cools down. So even when you have heartburn and things like that, this is a something good to do. You can do about five to 10 of these and just relax and kind of uh, relax your mind for a little bit and then you can come out of it. Or you can do this at any time during the day. Now the second one is Shitkari. Now if you're not able to roll your tongue and a lot of people have trouble with that, then you can just close your mouth, kind of keep your teeth together and it's almost like you're sucking into a straw and then again same thing in exhaling through the nose and I will show you that. So this is something some people find much easier than Sheetali. So you can do the same thing with this about 10 breaths in the morning or in the evening or any time during the day and try a couple of these things to see how your blood pressure is getting controlled. Uh, especially if you're feeling very aggravated and ag agitated, then take that time to breathe because breathing is what, is what is going to keep you healthy and balanced. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, just to give you a, a quick recap, uh, today's episode was all about yogasanas and pranayama, controlled breathing for blood pressure. These things can go a long way in helping you regulate your blood pressure. Again, remember, listen to your body and your mind and make sure it is suitable for you what you're doing. 
Again, second thing, learn from a qualified teacher if it's possible. Number three, try to do some breathing throughout the day. Um, the kinds of things that I demonstrated to you are just simple, deep breathing. Number four, uh, if, even if you don't do the whole practice that I have shared, I have shared the link in the description. If you can do that on a regular basis, that'll be great. But if you're not able to get to that, at least try to do some twisting and bending um, uh, postures during the day whenever you can just to relieve a lot of the tension and keep you more balanced. So uh, try this this week and then I'll see you back next week with another episode. Have a wonderful week ahead. That's all for today folks. Have a wonderful week ahead. Listen to your body, observe your mind and help yourself and join me next week. Mm -hmm.